my friend with his camera. How are we doing? It's a digital tour bus. I'm Bobby Bliss from Overkill. We're in Chicago tonight. Come check it out, boys and girls. We're on the road right now in support of our 18th studio record, The Grinding Wheel. Tours just started. We're in Chicago tonight. It's the fourth show of the tour. Who we have on board with us is uh, Nile from South Carolina. So it's kind of a death metal, thrash metal approach uh, to the evening's festivities. But it seems to be working out very well as uh, uh, there seems to be more, uh, uh, let's say, black and whites with regard to the approach here. So not two bands preaching to the choir. We're playing to uh, the other people's... Uh, supporters and following so that's been uh, really good and on top of that uh, almost full houses every night so I guess uh, things are looking good in the overkill camp right now especially for the tour not gonna take you into the other lounge I gotta tell you sometimes I do drive this thing don't know how to get in the fucking thing open the door you twat <laughs> this is our bus it's a bump out right here so this goes out an extra three feet and uh, that gives us a hell of a lot of space. As you can see, it's almost like the size of a dance floor. We've got plenty of guests here tonight. Band members over here, Derek Taylor, Mr. Eddie Garcia. Got going yeah, the bus nacho Mexican dude, who uh, I'm sure you guys saw earlier on one of the things. He's, uh, it's the only reason we keep him around is because of his skills in the microwave. But this is our front lounge, and it bumps out, and that bump out is uh, necessary. Mr. John Hopkins. Tour manager extraordinaire, sound man, Derek Taylor, Eddie Garcia. You, you know this guy. Big bad Didi Vernon and his bass guitar. Fuck you. <laughs> we got over here to uh, my right, your left. This is our flat screen, Sony. I'm guessing somewhere about 42 inches, so I can't really say exactly. I don't have my ruler with me. Uh, but it's all linked up to the stereo components for, for sound. Now, primarily what we're doing with this is, uh, is uh, uh, disc. Uh, we have disc? What's our thing? Direct TV, there it is, direct. I don't have that at home, so that's why I don't know. But what this contains is either Dave Linsk fights over it or myself. And when I get it, it's hockey games. When Dave gets it, it's uh, UFC. So it's always something violent, which is always inspiring for a thrash metal show. <laughs> but it's all hooked up to this so we can pump it through the speakers on the top. And uh, we've had some great parties up here uh, for hockey and for, and for the UFC stuff. <laughs> and there we got some coffee. This is where we keep the heads of the old band members. <laughs> you see, this is a this is a necessity. This chicken soup. I mean, you wouldn't think that. I mean, I would never touch this stuff if I was at home, but I crave it out here because sometimes you get stuck in like podunk nowhere. And uh, you're looking for something that's going to give you some kind of nourishment or nutrition, and this actually fits the bill. These like little, these little soups. You boil a little bit of water yeah, and you go right. for it. It's kind of not going to say it's homemade, but it's something decent. Cuarenta y tres. Pretty good, right? Yeah. And he's teaching me how to be a better Mexican, <laughs> and that's why that's why I got the mustache. It, my wife got me a book for Christmas because Eddie let me into the Mexican race a couple of years ago. And he named me Bobby Blitz de la O. Because <laughs> the Mexican guys, when they were on the bus, were having the most fun of anybody else. Well, in any case, so I get into the Mexican race, and for Christmas, my wife buys me a book, and it's called How to Be a Better Mexican. There's one fucking chapter that says Grow a Mustache. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Look at the mustache. And this is Derek's. This is Derek's 43. He loves this stuff. It's a, it's a drink from Spain. It's an almond liqueur. Um, we're not like all boozed up like the last times I had you guys on the... Boy, just when there's only two bottles of booze, I feel kind of healthy all of a sudden. And that's, that's insulting to this business. Here's some of the, you know, just the snacks and all that happy horse shit. I mean, it's nothing you haven't seen. I mean, there's no... It's not like there's a cocaine container or something. Yeah, this is our day sheet. Tells you when you're going on. This means, this is when we start, this means we may never finish. This is what the question mark means here. Uh, but a local band every night, and then Nile, then us. And um, so let's see interviews on here. Uh, just kind of all the, the ridiculous information that you need to get through a long day. And this is your entire day right here, just this page. So it tells you how far to the next gig, where we're going, Minneapolis is next, uh, where my interviews are going to be, what I'm going to be doing, digital tour bus, etc. 
Okay, and this is where we uh, Keurig. Obviously important in the morning, then I can give a shit whether it's here or not for the rest of the day because I only need one cup <coughs> to go. What's that guy's name who gives us this? Robert, uh, Robert Reed. Robert Reed. Yeah. Uh, he's from St. Louis. And for probably three decades, he's making us a cookie uh, every time we come through. And he makes it special. And he, he puts the bat on it with icing and, and hello from the gutter or you know, the grinding wheel or something. But it actually gets eaten, which is... Which is a weird thing because I don't like eating things that people like bring here and go here eat this you know I'm, just like, no, I'm, not, I'm not eating. <laughs> so, but Robert's been around for a long time and uh, has turned into a good friend. Good looking here. Crap. Yeah. The crapper. I've always thought it to be disgusting to have a black toilet. I don't know how everybody else feels about this, but black toilets to me do not speak hygiene. And that's why... <coughs> I am Bobby Blitz from Overkill and I endorse Purell hand sanitizer. You gotta keep the germs away. Keep the germs away. I used to walk around behind Derek Skoma with Lysol going... Psh, psh, germ away. So that was the toilet. Nothing really great in here. Some ice. Oh, some more booze. Fireball. I think there'll be uh, vodka and whiskey on here tonight. We occasionally get into that. I got a few Heineken's on the uh, on ice. We actually got a guy. I mean, isn't it something you go into a refrigerator and there's like a little thing and it says on it animal, right? And it almost looks like <laughs> it means like we have a dog or something. <laughs> But he's the smartest motherfucking dog I know. He's uh, he's one of our new guys. Pleasure to have along. And he's smart enough to mark his own food. It's where we sleep. Let me look at this one because it's nice and clean. Light there. But you got your TV. You got your uh, you got your single mattress up here. You got about I guess it's about eight inches of thickness here. Maybe six inches of thickness. They're pretty decent size. Something for your personal items over on the side. You bring this down to be connected to the front lounge. You really want to watch something in bed, but I, you know, I, I don't ever go out here to do that. I go out here to socialize, have a few beers, have a good time at the shows. I just need a comfortable bed and a place to put my shit during the day. Think about how. Oh, and that's mine. Full, full of my shit. <laughs> full of during the day. And necessity. That's because people give you stuff to eat that you don't know what it is. So. Here's the back lounge. This is also the laundry room, kids. You can see we dry the stage clothes off in here. We got another day sheet in here. We got another entertainment system. Some of the boys like to work out with weights, as you can see down here on my feet. But this is more of the private office. I mean, guys uh, retire back here to get a little privacy, talk to their families, call the missus, call the kids, uh, stay in touch, um, I think. I think it's pretty important that you have a duality, uh, that it's not just one-sided, that if you last for 35 years out on the road, that you have to have a balance with regard to some of uh, the home as well as uh, the road. So, so kind of a private area where you can get your act together. I, I think when it comes to the back lounge, I'm back here a lot. This is where I start my day. I don't like starting my day with people and all of, you know, all of this stuff going on, everybody talking in my ear. I like to sit back here like that, I read the news, I watch the news, I read the news. Um, have some coffee, um, and then get back into my day from there. But I think Didi and myself use this as an office during the day, take care of some business stuff. Uh, it, it's also where we go to have you know the meetings uh, because it is the private spot. And I'll show you one thing I hate about this. Look at this. See this? This is how these doors close, right? So you press that. Not working. Here we go. Other side. Come on, baby. Right, so it's got this like Star Trek vibe going on with this, right? But once you're in here, they, this closes off in three spots, and I'm waking up in the middle of the night totally freaking out. <laughs> I don't know where I am, and forgetting that it takes a button to get out of here. I'd rather have a doorknob. Well, it was good to be with you, good to spend some time. Remember, the grinding wheel's now officially out, our 18th record, man. It's, uh, you know, for us, something we're very proud of to be valid in the current day, as opposed to being remembered for what we were. So maybe come out and see us, and let me prove that to you out on the road. So the grinding wheel, check out the tour. You can see it on WreckingCrew.com, Overkill uh, Band at Facebook, Overkill Band at Twitter. Uh, stay connected to us. We'll stay connected to you into 2017.